Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from a beautiful Menasha, Wisconsin. Today I have a special treat for you. We are going to do a technique called spotlighting. Now spotlighting is a technique that can be done in a variety of different ways and I'm going to show you two of them today. I love this technique because not only is it easy, but it also packs a big wow. I think that the cards usually turn out very like spectacular. Let's turn this camera around and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're gonna kick off this card making session by showing you all the supplies that I'm going to be using to do the spotlighting technique cards. I am going to use the stippled roses and I chose the stamp set because it's line art, but it's got a larger image in here and that's exactly the look that I was going for. I'm also going to be using the Distressed Tile 3D Embossing Folder. My embellishments will be the Brushed Brass Butterflies. We're gonna use a little label for this first card out of the Nested Essentials. I've got my Baker's Twine Essential Pack here. It comes with five different colors of Baker's Twine. Some Stampin' Blend markers and a one and a half inch circle punch as well as we're gonna be using a circle out of the Stylish Shapes dies. And I've got a little bit of stamp and seal here and then my basic tools. I'm gonna to bring in my piercing mat right now. This is what I like to stamp on. And I just wrap it with some printer weight paper, tape it on with scotch tape so that I don't stamp all over the actual piercing mat. And this is, the, this is the surface that I stamp on. This particular card uses a technique that I am also going to be featuring for my monthly technique club. We're gonna start out with a basic white layer of basic white thick cardstock, four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it here at five and a half. I like using the thicker bases because they make your cards a little more sturdy white our white basic white cardstock is a little thinner which is wonderful to stamp on but these thick card bases just give it a little bit more oomph then we're going to use a basic black layer that's four by five and a quarter I've got a lemon lolly layer that I have already embossed in this distressed tile 3d embossing folder and you can see that neat design on there Another black layer, this one is three and an eighth by four and five eighths. A layer of white that's going to go on top of there that is three by four and a half. And then I've got a scrap of lemon lolly. And by the way, all of these dimensions, still photos, links to the products that I'm using can be found on my blog. And that link is gonna be right under this video also. So make sure you look for a link that says you can go to my blog and find all of the dimensions in one place. I've also got a basic white envelope here because of course I love to stamp up my envelopes to match my cards. And the best time to do that is when we have all our supplies out. So let's get right down to our technique. We're gonna take our basic white layer and our basic black layer. Now before I forget to do this, because I'm notorious for forgetting to do this part, I am actually going to use this circle punch and I'm gonna punch a circle right out of the middle of my black layer. Now again, this is a one and a half inch circle punch and we're going to be covering this with this white layer so you're never gonna know that that little circle has been punched out of there. Just gonna set that aside for right now. And we're going to stamp on the smaller layer with the rose stamp. I'm gonna be using Memento Black Ink today, which I seem to have lost here someplace. Here it is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't tell you the ink that we're gonna use. We're using Memento, Pla Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm using this because this is the ink that works great with our stamp and blend alcohol markers. I'm gonna stamp this right in the middle of this layer. That turned out beautiful. And then as long as we have our ink out here, I'm going to stamp my sentiment on this little scrap of lemon lolly. And I'm gonna make this a thank you card. Put 
this away. I'm gonna clean off that rose stamp right away because I'm gonna use that on the inside of my card as well and I need it to not have black ink on it. This is a Stampin' Chamois. This is what I use to clean my stamps with. You'll find this in the product list underneath um, all the photos that I'm gonna put on my blog. So lots of good information on my blog. You wanna make sure you take a look at that. We're gonna get the Nested Essentials dies out here. This is a fantastic set of dies. All these shapes in here. I've used this one a lot. So I'm going to die cut this. Then I'm going to take the circle and this is the second from the largest or second from the smallest circle in the stylus shapes dies. And I'm going to die cut right about here on this particular layer. So I'll be right back, hang tight. And here we come with that little circle. And then here is our sentiment layer. And what we need to do with this is we need to color it. And what I found is because this is such an intricate image that I actually want to kind of place it back in here and see what's supposed to be flower, what's supposed to be leaf. I've got Lemon Lolly Dark, and I'm just going to go through here and kind of outline so that I don't color leaves yellow. And I want to just stay right on the circle. And this, I think this flower kind of ends right there. And this is another petal on the next flower, just so I kind of know what's happening here. I'll be coloring just a little bit more as soon as I take the circle back out of here. I'm only doing this because it's, this image is, like I said, it's just so intricate, it's hard to really see what is supposed to be green and what's supposed to be yellow. Okay, now we're gonna pop that out of here. Now, if you don't have a real intricate um, stamp, you're not gonna need to do what I just did. I'm gonna grab my light uh, Granny Ample Green. I forget what color I was using here. And I'm just gonna come in here and make sure that I've covered all my bases and I get everything colored in. This is again the dark lemon lolly. I'm gonna use the lines, like the shaded lines that Stampin' Up has created here with the artwork to know where I'm gonna put my dark. And that looks pretty good. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You can do as much or as little as you want. And then I'm gonna come in and just blend all this color with the lighter one. That's how I use these blends. These are alcohol markers. They're fantastic. I love them so much because they don't leave, they, they leave no scribble lines. I can probably come back in here with my bigger tip and they kind of smell good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Some people might hate the smell, but I'm like, hmm, I don't think you're supposed to sniff them. <laughs> okay, you might get drunk, right? It's alcohol. Okay, so this is what we have. We have this beautiful flower. I've just colored in the little bits on this circle. I'm going to attach this to my black layer. And that's gonna make just a nice frame for this circle. Okay, now we're gonna come in and we're going to add this back together. Don't worry about that hole there, doesn't matter. You could, either way, it's gonna kind of show up here a little bit. I'm going to add my glue right on here. I don't want to get too close to the edge like I just did because we don't want any glue peeking out under this black layer. I'm just going to get this on here as straight as I can. I like to use the multi-purpose liquid glue because it gives you that wiggle room. That's nice to have. Now, before we do anything else with this, I am going to take my black out of the... Baker's Twine Essential Pack, and I'm gonna tie this. I wanna leave enough room to make a nice bow. So I'm gonna just tie this around here. I'm gonna wrap it three times, and then I kind of hold it with my thumb and leave the tail about the same length as the one that I started with there on the bottom. 
Now, because this is so nice and thin, it's one of the things I love about Baker's Twine. You can actually tie a knot with it so that you don't have to worry about trying to keep it tight while you're tying a bow. Because sometimes that's difficult, right? Okay, so there's my little knot. Now I'm gonna tie a bow. Makes sense, right? Now, if you were using ribbon or something, you obviously couldn't do that because you'd have too much bulk under the, with the knot underneath the bow. But with this nice thin baker's twine, not a big deal. Okay, let's get our card layers put together. Where'd my glue go? Right here. Another little tip about this glue is I like to leave it on my table on its side. You can leave the lid off of it. Um, it'll just dry a little bit in the end if it's left for an extended period of time. And then you just kind of pull that little dried glue spot off the end. But I like to leave it lay on the table. That way when I pick it up to use it again, you haven't set the glue all back down to the bottom. It's just kind of right there ready for you. Before I do this, I'm going to stamp the inside of my card. If I make a mistake on this, I haven't done anything else to it. I just think that's a good real rule of thumb. And I forgot to mention, I'm gonna bring in the Lemon Lolly ink because I'm gonna stamp this flower inside my card in a color. Now, I don't know if I want this to be full strength or not, but we're gonna, we're gonna take a little look at it. Where's my flower? Right here. Okay, so we're gonna take a little look. This is gonna be too dark. It's not. I can write right over that. And that's my intention here is to just put a little something on the inside so I can write right over it. I think that's a real um, interesting look. As long as your ink isn't too dark. Now, if that was red, that's not gonna work, right? But this nice light lemon lolly, that'll be perfect on the inside. I should have done my envelope at the same time too, but okay, here we go. We are going to add this to our card front. I wanna make sure I get a sufficient amount of glue on here because we do have an embossed layer and we've got that Baker's Twine under there that I need to make sure my glue hits the front, you know, my cardstock, so it glues on there. Now you've noticed that I've pushed it all the way up to the top left corner. I just thought that was an interesting look. You can certainly put it in the center if that's what you want, but our sentiment is going to play a part in this placement. Put a dimensional on here. One would probably be sufficient, but gosh, I have like 250 or 300 in a pack, so why not? <laughs> now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna place this back in here like a puzzle piece. So I can see that this flower goes up here. You can see here's our leaf, leaf that's sticking out here. Here's some of the leaves on this bud over here. So I just kind of wanna place it back in here like a puzzle piece. And let me make sure, yep, that looks really, really good. Yay. And that's your spotlight. So if you're not big into coloring, this is a great way to be able to just color a little bit, not a whole bunch. And you can enjoy these line art stamps just as much as anybody else without having to do all the coloring. Now, I've already placed some mini dimensionals on the back of this sentiment layer. And I'm gonna pick them off with my take your pick tool. And I'm going to, and notice that I put four little ones because it's gonna straddle this baker's twine. And I'm gonna put my sentiment right over here. Oh my good grief, is that not so pretty? Then we're gonna bring in those um, brass butterflies. I'm gonna take this little tool out of here and I'm going to flip it around so I have the spatula. I find that that works better for picking up these flat little butterflies. And I think I'll just put one butterfly right here and maybe a couple more. How about maybe one right up here? And then we've got little ones on this card. I'll do maybe another little one right over here. I love the way this turned out. Now to make that matching envelope, I'm just gonna grab this lemon lolly. I'm gonna stamp my rose again. And I think I will just kind of put it mm, right in here. And now we've got an envelope that matches our beautiful card. I should get this out of here before I throw my card in it, right? 
Isn't that pretty? Spotlight technique. So, like I said, this is part of my monthly technique club. I'm going to use this for and send this out to all of my technique club members. It's an online club that each month a minimum order is placed and then you get this instruction sheet that also has the date of the video on it so they can go right to my blog and find the video tutorial and then it's got a little sample of the technique on here and for this one I use the leaves and I use some smaller punches because I'm working in a smaller area but this is super fun every month we do this and again, there's going to be a link right underneath this video that will take you right to the Technique Club details. If you're interested in that, you do have to live in the United States to participate. But anybody can participate, whether you're a demonstrator or a customer. Um, I make that available to everyone. Okay, I'm going to clean up my space here, and then I'm going to show you another spotlight technique and a bunch of cards that I have made using these um, using this technique. I made several different colors. Hang tight. Okay, for this particular spotlighting technique, I've got my card base and I'm using Petunia Pop here that is five and a half by eight and a half. I've scored it and folded it. My black layer is pretty big. It is actually four and three eighths by five and an eighth. And I'll explain that in a minute and why I did that. Then I've got a piece of basic white that's four by, whoops, four by five and a quarter, a basic black that is three by four and a quarter, and then another piece of white that is two and three quarters by four. So what we're gonna do for this spotlight is we're gonna put a little bit of stamp and seal. This is a tape runner, and I'm just putting teeny little about amounts on the back because this is a temporary hold. Hang on, it looks like the edge of my cardstock got bent a little bit. I don't want that. I'm going to do my very best to center this on my white layer and that looks pretty good. So we've just got those two little dots of ink in there. We're going to be using that memento ink again with this large rose image and you'll notice that I bring my ink to my image like this versus trying to stamp my stamp in it because I can see what's going on with the bigger stamps so doing it that way. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to stamp our sentiment. And while the Stippled Roses has some really wonderful sentiments in it, I decided that I need some Get Well cards. So I'm going to use So Sincere, Hope You're Feeling Better. And then I made some more cards with some other sentiments out of here that I'll show you in just a minute. So I've got Hope You're Feeling Better. And I'm going to do that first because I need to work around my sentiment. And let's see, mm, we're gonna go this way with this card. So I'm gonna, let me pull this in here so I can make sure I get this straight in here. Just gonna center that in the middle of my smaller white layer. Now we're gonna stamp that big rose. And we've got this card layered for a reason. I'm gonna come in and stamp right over here. Now I don't want to interfere with my sentiment, right? So I'm giving this really good pressure, like I'm really pushing on it. And you're going to see a white edge around this smaller piece. Don't worry about that. That's what the black layer, the mat, is going to be for that we're going to put under the smaller white one. And then we're going to come in here and I'm going to do the same thing again. I want to make sure that I'm getting enough of my rose on here that it's going to be spotlighted. And there we go, get this out of the way. So this is what we have now. And now we only put that little temporary tape on there. So that's gonna come off pretty easy. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna color the flowers that are on here because this whole layer is going to be our spotlight layer. So I'm gonna color the smaller area up here and share with you how I colored this. I like to use with my dark. I've got dark petunia pop. So again, I'm just going to kind of go around and outline my flowers so I can distinguish where my petals are and then my leaves because when I was making cards, I accidentally colored a leaf and I didn't mean to do that. My leaves need to be green. They should not be yellow, okay? 
So that's why I'm kind of being careful about making sure that I can see what I'm doing because this is a very like detailed stamp. It's beautiful, but it gets a little tricky in knowing where the color ends and starts for the leaves and the flowers. So I want to kind of look at this. Let's bring that stamp back in here so I can see what is happening here. Is that the one that I used? No, I think it's right here. So I'm just looking at this over here and that's right here. So this little part right here is also flowered. Does that make sense? I just don't want it to be goofy. Okay, so I've got that. Then I'm going to come in with my lighter Petunia Pop and I'm just going to start blending. Remember, we still got that little bit of sticky on the back of here too so don't set it on anything that it might stick to that matters so that's a good way to put it this would be a good place to use that bigger brush end on your marker I don't use those ends very often I don't know why I don't think I'm that great of a colorer so I try to be careful <laughs> okay then I'm going to use the dark Granny Apple Green, and I'm going to go around and do a little bit of shading on my leaves. And again, I'm using the outline and also the um, shadow lines that Stampin' Up! has put into the line art as my guide. And I'm not an artist, but boy, these markers and all the work that they do with their artwork makes me feel look like I'm an artist. I feel like an artist when I'm done. Again, just blending that darker color into the lighter color so you don't see those definite lines. That's what makes these markers so spectacular because, wow, look at how I shaded that. You can see how easy this is. Everybody's a rock star artist with these markers. If I put just a little bit more in there. Okay, so this is what we have so far, you guys. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, I'm going to take you off the camera. I'm going to color the rest of this because I don't want to take up too much of your time. And then I'll come right back to you as soon as I'm done. So hang tight. Okay, we are back and we have this layer done. We're going to add this to the black layer. And that black layer is going to help fill in that gap that we saw on our larger layer when we stamped these roses. So um, I tried to make it with a smaller eighth inch border or 16th inch border on all the sides, but um, that didn't cover up the gap enough. So I've got a quarter inch border. So this piece is a quarter inch bigger than the white piece. And that's what I found worked sufficiently. And now you can see how this just goes right back in here like a puzzle piece. Isn't that just stunning? This stamp set is really beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna put this on our card front. And I used that, I kept my white layer as big as I could because if I would have made it smaller and made this black border smaller so that you can see more of the card base you're you're losing more of this and I really wanted to see as much as I could of that border there I'm going to take that petunia pop Ooh, I forgot to clean this stamp off I need to clean this black off of here and I'm going to stamp the inside of my card base with the petunia pop I hope this isn't too dark. I should have done this before I put the front on, right you guys? I just said that. Let's see. Yeah, we're just gonna click this. I think that's gonna tone down and I'll be able to write right over it. If not, I'll put a white layer in here, but that's what I did there. And then I have my envelope here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just stamp my roses right here on the back of my flap. I think that'll be super pretty. Let's see. Oh my gosh, isn't that not so stunning? 
Yeah, I like that. I think that looks nice. Okay, we have to embellish this card and then I'm gonna show you all the other colors that I made because they really are. This is a spectacular technique no matter what color you use, really. Let's get our butterflies on here. I think I'll do one. How about one? How about one right here? And then we'll grab a little one. These brass butterflies are nice because they're really, really flat. You don't add any bulk in your cards, and they're just at that pop of that gold that makes it so spectacular. Okay, so here is this card. And again, I'm hoping that this will tone down a little bit. If it doesn't, I'll add a white layer in there. So we've got this. Then I also made this peach pie. And you can see you can write right over this on the inside. So that turned out really good. Um, this card is tall. This card is wide. I've got So Thankful from You from that So Sincere. Here is a bubble bath, pink one. And I used the congratulations out of the stippled rose. And that turned out really nice on the inside to be able to write over it. Here is a yellow one. This is Daffodil Delight. And again, the inside is there. And then I wanted to bring this one back in. This is that other card that I made with a different type of spotlighting, right? We use just a smaller little snippet, my Technique Club instruction card. And here we come in here with a Fresh Freesia version. Lemon Lolly Fresh Freesia. You guys have to leave a comment and let me know which, which of these two is your favorite, Lemon Lolly or Fresh Freesia. And then which one of these do you like best? We've got Petunia Pop, Peach Pie, bubble bath or daffodil delight. But aren't these just spectacular? Spotlight technique, you guys, give it a try. I want you to give it a try. It's super easy and especially if you don't like coloring, this is just a tiny little amount that you color which makes line art stamps have a whole new light, right? Again, links to my blog are right under here. Also, um, the link to my Technique Club if you wanna get more details about that. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. If you're new to Stampin' Up! and you would like to get a hold of one of our catalogs, you don't have a demonstrator, I would be happy to provide that. Just pop me an email. My email address is right here on the screen. And also right up here, you're going to find a link that's going to take you right to the blog post where you're going to get the dimensions. Um, I'm going to give you the dimensions for uh, the cards that we made. This one, this one, and this one are like pretty much the same size, but some of these are bigger. Some of these layers are bigger, and it's just because I was playing around to see what I was going to do here. But I'm going to give you the dimensions for this, the dimensions for this. I'll put pictures of all of these on my blog. There'll also be a complete product list there for you if you want to go, what color was that yellow ink that she used? This is Lemon Lolly. This is Daffodil Delight, and you can see the difference between those two. Lemon Lolly is much lighter, Daffodil is darker, but yeah, so pretty. Okay, this is a blog hop. So again, um, click up here, I'm pointing down, but click up here to head to my blog. You're gonna scroll down my blog and under all my projects, you're gonna see a bunch of little thumbnail pictures. Click on one of those, that'll take you to the next blog that's featuring the spotlighting technique. And then you'll get to their blog and you'll go down and find either the thumbnails, a place where it says click here to go to the next one. You can hop from blog to blog to blog, see what the Totally Techniques design team members have all made. All of our cards are going to be different. Like I should say, I don't know what they are yet, but mine are going to be different from other people's. So you're going to get lots of spotlighting technique ideas. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. Make sure you let your creativity sparkle and make some of these pretty technique cards. Bye-bye.